Hello everyone, we are jumping right back into the series from top coat or base coat to top coat and I'm starting by removing my gel polish so we can get ready to do some layered stamping today. I am roughing up all of the polish in the top coats and filing through, then I've cut some cotton balls in half, soaked them in acetone and I'm going to use these little clips to hold them on and soak them off. I usually go about 10 minute increments and then I scrape a little if I still have some I scrape some more and of course I spilled acetone on my brand new foam board because welcome to my world <laughs> but you can see if you're very patient when you take off gel polish you can have very pretty nails underneath with no damage so I am very happy to use that method and take as much time as I need we are going to do a uh, layered stamping today and this is one of the few plates that Maniology has for layered, um, Clear Jelly Stamper and Uber Chic have a lot more layering plates than Maniology. But what we're going to do on them is start from the bottom and work our way up. And I've changed a few things around with nail polish color and stuff. I'm going to show you kind of what I do with the base coat and then the other colors later as we use them. And in this video, I'm not going to make you watch every single step on every single nail because a lot of them are repetitive and a little tedious. I'm going to use the color coconut to go in because it is a custard white. It's a little bit off white, so it's not a super white harsh line for a French manicure. Um, I've been craving a French lately. I don't know why. I just haven't done them in a while. And you can tell because I'm not that good at it right now. They are a little crooked. Um, <laughs> but I don't really care. I think they look fine. End result's good. I'm happy with that. So I am going to go through and just kind of French tip, tip all the ends of my nails. I did use Orly rubberized base coat for it. I'm going to grab this color Skin Deep for my ring finger. And I didn't mean, like I meant to not put a French on that. I meant to do this the whole time. I just got carried away while I was painting. That's what happens when you film nail art videos while you're watching Criminal Minds. Um, <laughs> get distracted. <laughs> so I am going to paint that down all over the whole nail, kind of as an accent nail, but I want this to be a little springy, a little fresh and clean, um, very neat kind of tidy mani. I'm going to grab my favorite, favorite color for a Your Natural Nails But Better, which is SE Skinny Dip. Um, my bottle's getting a little low. I'm very sad. And hey, if you haven't hit the bell when you've subscribed, would you please go ahead and do that? That way you make sure you see my videos when they come out. I am going to paint this over all the nails again, just to give them kind of a natural nails, but better sealed in. And it will also tone down that coconut even just a little bit more because it kind of has a orangey peach tint to it. So I'm kind of all staying in the warm tone realm there. I think that comes out very pretty and then I go through and use the Sally Hansen quick dry top coat on top because it's nice and shiny and very pretty. Now you could just walk away with this and go hey I have a pretty mani. I would have made it all French if I was going to do that. But um, make sure you seal in before you stamp on top of it. I've said it a million times and I'll keep saying it a million times. It's a huge time saver, saver if you make a mistake. FYI, apparently I can't talk today. So we'll see how I get through the rest of this video. Now I'm gonna go in and grab a dark color and this is the light color green. We're gonna have a base color and a highlight color in every shade that we use. Buttercup is gonna be my highlight color. Arctic Equinox is gonna be my base color. And then I'm gonna use a straight up black for the final outline. As we looked at the plate earlier, and I was pointing down, and then we go to the middle, and then we go to the top. The bottom is your base layer. Now for this particular plate, you also have to do a technique kind of called gradient stamping, uh, where you put more than one color on an image. I haven't really covered that a lot here on my channel, but if I can find a video for it, I'll click, I'll put it in a card up top so you can click on it and check it out. Now. One of the things you have to be careful of with gradient stamping is which way do you want the colors to go. I would rather the yellow bleed into the green than vice versa. So I'm doing this as the base to pick up this pretty little yellow tulip. And we're going to go ahead and stamp it down. And again, these are the darker colors. This is your base color. This is what actual layered stamping looks like. You're starting with something on the base and then you add on top of it and then you add on top of it and then you keep adding on top of it until you finish your image. Personally, I prefer reverse stamping. However, this is, you know, it's fine. It, it's 
To me, when you do reverse stamping, you color it all in at once and you can set that to the side and work on other things while it's drying. When you do layered stamping, it's like actively working the whole time because you're stamping, doing the next thing, stamping, doing the next thing, stamping, rather than stamp at once, color it in, let it dry, plop the stamp on. So to me, layered stamping can be a little bit more difficult, but overall it's not hard. Now, as you see here, I've moved to the middle layer and I just used the lighter color yellow and the lighter color green so that I'll have some highlights on that flower. And as you can see there, it already starts to show it has some depth. Now, if you want to get super crazy, you can top coat in between each layer and that will give it more and more depth. But it is a lot of polish and it is a lot more time consuming that way. Depends on you and how long you can keep your polish on and the effort you feel like is worth it for that. <laughs> Okay, so I've gone through and done all the highlights. So the yellow ones are finished, but this is kind of springy and tulipy, so I want some pink tulips too. So I grabbed Class Clown, that's from the School's Out collection, and then Sweet, which was a color in a Maniology box. Again, I'd rather the pink kind of go into the green than vice versa, so I'm scraping down on these. Now, do they bleed into each other some on this plate? Absolutely. It's very difficult not to do that on this plate because of the way these flowers are designed. I don't really mind though. And I think at the end of the day, when you see the final product, you won't really notice it. If you were looking for it, you'd see it. But if you're not, you're not gonna notice it. Um, and I just went ahead and did a highlight real quick on that one so you could see it kind of all together. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing. Dark colors first, stamp it down. And part of the fun about these designs is, you know, you can alternate your flower height. You could put as many on there as will fit on your nails. You could do a couple really low. You can do several very high. Whatever kind of bouquet you want, whatever kind of colors you want, as long as you have a darker color and then a highlight color, you can pretty much layered stamp whatever you want. And then of course, the final, final step is to put the outline on top. Now, when I went back and looked at this later in person, it looks really nice with the black. On video, it looks kind of harsh and stark. So um, in person, this is a lot cuter, but this is your outline, your shading, um, everything else that you would need to top it off. When I do this, if I have different designs on the plate, like I did the yellow first, I'm gonna do the black first on the yellow. So that way it kind of keeps in keeps the momentum going for the order that you stamped them in. Like if something is in the back, then the outline for it is in the back and not on top. So there's little nitpicky things like that that you have to think about when you do layered stamping more than reverse stamping. But it is a fairly easy technique as long as you're good at lining things up. It's just, to me, it feels like, it feels like it's more work even though it's not necessarily more work. <laughs> Um, let me know if you have any questions about it or if you want to see any of the other layering plates that I have. I'll be happy to show them to you and see if we can get you started on it. Again, let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to watch the next video. Click in the upper right hand corner. You know you want to. Thanks for being here. Bye bye.